Здравствуйте! Hello! This video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. It's a subscription on-demand video learning service with lectures and courses from top university professors. Members get unlimited access to over 11,000 video lectures covering anything from history, science to cooking or photography. History in particular might interest you with titles such as American military history or World War II, a military and social history. But more about those and more about Great Courses Plus in general after our verdict. It's time to start the Battle of the Bulge. It is 16th of December 1944. 1600 German artillery pieces open fire on the Allied positions. Soon, four German armies will pour into Ardennes and attack the Allies in the last significant German offensive of the Second World War. One that Germans hoped would help them not lose the war. So what were the Germans trying to achieve? By the end of 1944, they were clearly losing. Half a year earlier, the Normandy landings opened the Western Front. Allied forces then pushed Germany into its original borders. Their thrust largely avoided the Ardennes forest and went through Belgium and Netherlands. Allies had huge problems with resupply, slowing their advance by October. Without a constant stream of supplies, all that Allied might would be largely ineffective. They had a larger force on the ground near the front and a massive advantage in the air. But a lot of the Allies' forces were placed forward near the Dutch-German border. Germans thus saw an opportunity to try and thrust through the Ardennes forest, into the relatively soft rear of the Allied war machine, cutting their most potent force off and denying them the means of resupply. Their plan was to reach Antwerp, a crucial resupply port for the Allies, in four days. They timed the offensive with cloudy weather, which would take most of Allied air power out of the equation. Germany assembled a sizable force, though their units had to use some reservists and various personnel that were previously deemed either too young or too old to serve. Allies had no way to track German movements. Spies were scarce within Germany, and Germans could use fixed telephone lines instead of radio, so message interception was not significant. Bad weather, normal for that time of year, also meant air recon was not useful. German 6th Panzer Army was the most elite of German units. It started pushing through, down the shortest possible route to Antwerp. But US resistance was unexpectedly strong. 6th Army Group eventually had to reroute westward. US forces were blowing up bridges and overpasses, as well as dumping their fuel so it wouldn't be captured as they retreated. Still, initial disposition of local forces was quite favorable for the Germans. Their tanks were more potent, and the artillery edge suppressed Allied forces. German 5th Panzer Army fared much better, surrounding some US regiments and forcing them to surrender. Allies also suffered many casualties in the initial onslaught, due to the element of surprise and fairly unexperienced soldiers guarding that part of the front. Interestingly, part of German attack included infiltration by English-speaking German troops. They wore US uniforms and were supposed to take some bridges over the River Meuse. While bridges weren't reached, the infiltrators were cutting power lines and communication lines, turning road signs around and spreading confusion among Allies. In a panic, Allies were questioning their own troops at checkpoints. Even the US General Bradley was briefly detained at one point. German 7th Army was crossing into and retaking recently liberated Luxembourg. Within four days, town of Bastogne was reached. Two US elite airborne divisions were sent as a reinforcement to help fend off the German attack. As the Germans were starting to besiege Bastogne, the Allies planned a large counterattack. US General Patton managed to divert two of his divisions in just several days. German 5th Army was in the meantime advancing further up north. The town of St. Wyth, which oversaw an important route junction, saw heavy fighting. Germans had hoped to capture it within a day, but it fell almost a week later, slowing them down significantly. Another vital defense line was the River Meuse. Allied forces were to hold the bridges going over the river, but lack of available units resulted in use of non-maneuver unit troops. German forces managed to break through at one point, and progressed rapidly for a day before Allied threat of cutting them off meant they had to stop and consolidate. 
From December 23rd, the Allies also enjoyed some air support, as the weather improved. German supply lines were especially threatened. Throughout the attack, Germans suffered from lack of room to move their units forward. Roads were vital, yet were clogged by so many troops on a small area. At times, German tanks were blocked by other German troops moving down the roads. The next day, German offensive was more or less stopped, as Germans outran their supply efforts. At that point, some German generals wanted to retreat, but Hitler did not allow it. Incidentally, the name Battle of the Bulge stuck in the media as the protrusion German forces made into Allied lands resembled the bulge on a map. Though Germany was sending reinforcements as well, Allies built up their local forces much more quickly. By Christmas Eve, their numbers eclipsed Germany's. Being surrounded from December 21st, Bastogne had to be resupplied by air, while enduring German attacks. Finally, on 26th, General Patton's units broke through the German encirclement. It was a limited operation. Allied forces were still consolidating for a big push. After some days of quiet, Germany attempted another push on New Year's Eve. Alongside another battle farther south, an air campaign to reach Allied airfields was launched. Germans mustered pretty much all available aircraft on the Western Front. While many Allied planes were indeed destroyed on the ground, Germans lost too many planes of their own. In the long run, Allies replenished their air force, while Luftwaffe never recovered. Interestingly, a lot of German losses were from friendly anti-aircraft fire, due to miscommunication. German Operation Nordwind failed as well during the next few weeks, taking up many German soldiers, which could have otherwise been used elsewhere, perhaps even reinforced the German salient up north. Force levels at the Battle of the Bulge were already heavily favoring the Allies after the New Year's. General Patton and British General Montgomery were to press the German salient from two sides, with Montgomery being given command over General Bradley's units. Initially, progress was slow. Harsh terrain and lots of snow didn't help. Germans were retreating, but often had to leave their heavy equipment behind. Finally, on January 7th, Hitler ordered withdrawal from the Ardennes, though some German units still remained for a few weeks. Due to the fact that a lot of US troops in the opening stage of the battle were inexperienced, US casualties were quite steep, but overall they were comparable to German losses. US losses include the highest number of killed in any battle US participated in the World War II, and second deadliest US battle overall, showing once again that lack of initiative, lack of intelligence info and troop inexperience can be a deadly cocktail. The whole offensive was an act of desperation. German generals knew chances of success were minuscule, and that too many variables had to align perfectly for any sense of success. But Hitler, out of touch with reality, thought the victory would make Allies strike a peace deal. In the end, Germans didn't achieve much. They delayed the Allies by a month or so, but at a very high cost in experienced troops and pilots, as well as many soldiers lost. It's conceivable that a more defensive posture would, in the long run, delay Allies even a bit longer, if all those German troops were available. Battle of the Bulge was thus a German gamble that did not pay off. If you like this video, you may like many history courses that are available on the Great Courses Plus. American military history was particularly interesting to me, being presented by the former NATO commander Wesley Clark. The World War II, a military and social history course, was also very insightful. The Battle of the Bulge and Operation Market Garden lecture taught me about the level of disagreement between various Allied commanders, as how they were to proceed into Germany. You will find many similar interesting lectures if you sign up for a free trial. The professors holding the lectures come from Ivy League and other great universities, or are experts from the likes of National Geographic, the Smithsonian or the Culinary Institute of America. As said, The Great Courses Plus is giving away this free trial. Support my channel and subscribe to their service by visiting thegreatcoursesplus.com slash binkov or clicking the link in the description below the video. Stream their lectures from your TV, tablet, laptop or phone and learn at your own pace. New subjects, lectures and professors are added every month. Check it out! And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.